Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the presentation. I know the last three days has been quite hectic. A lot of information has been coming through. There's a lot of interactive sessions and discussions going on. So what we would like to like do today is go through the last presentation that we have as part of today's session, which is more about the NFV orchestration framework that we are contributing to OpenStack. We will discuss what is the architecture change that we have done, what are the current features that we have implemented, as well as we'll try to see what are the next roadmap features that we have where we would like to collaborate or even submit uh, into OpenStack. A brief overview of who we are. We are part of the Tata group, the t uh, t TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. We are a group which is in telecom practice. What we do is we submit into open source contributions, which includes OpenStack, Open Daylight, and in the data plane for Open vSwitch. And I have with me my colleague, Akhila, who is an architect on OpenStack. And with that, I will hand it over to my architect, who will walk you through, through today's presentation. Over to you, Akhila. Good evening. Uh, as Partha uh, summarized, what we are trying to present today is our journey in building uh, solutions on NFV orchestration with OpenStack as the base. There are multiple options that we had tried out. And uh, these solutions have evolved one after the other. Uh, the next one based on the issues that we have identified in the previous solution. So we'll walk you through um, whatever we have done so far in the NFV orchestration space, starting from the OpenStack Grizzly. To set the context, we'll start with uh, a background on NFV. We know that the key drivers for NFV are uh, reduced capital expenditure because you have pooled hardware now instead of specific hardware for specific network functions. And uh, you are able to deploy services rapidly because you have uh, virtualization and automation as the drivers which enable you to quickly deploy your services. And uh, you are also looking at scalability as an advantage. And you are able to scale depending on uh, the demand rather than pre-planning and uh, provisioning things well beforehand. This is a good part of NFV. We all like the benefits, but how do we reach there? Uh, it is a long journey because we are used to a stable system, an ecosystem which has been proven, and we are trying to get into a space where uh, things are pretty uncertain, new. Um, in order to get some clarity on how we should go about it, um, what are the different aspects that you should consider, ETSI NFE ISG has come up with a reference architecture in this reference architecture, I mean, it's a very good start point. They identify the different areas that need to be focused on for us to reach the final goal of uh, the NFV. This is a, a high level architecture for the whole ecosystem as such. We have different components here, starting bottom up. We have the infrastructure itself, where we are talking about hardware which has uh, which and um, the virtualization layer which enables you to create pools of virtual compute storage and network you have your virtual network functions running on top of this infrastructure and the traditional oss and bss systems which help you manage um, and you also have a very interesting component which is the nfv management and orchestration uh, framework which has three key components now this is the part that we are trying to focus on to build because as we saw earlier, among the other things, um, automation is also a key to achieve a rapid service delivery. And you need to have a well-defined ecosystem to be able to automate things. If we look a little bit deeper into the Mano uh, architecture, which is our focus, we see that we have a NFE orchestrator, which looks at the network services, orchestration of the services. So when you have a request to provision, say, a VOLT kind of a service, and uh, if a component of that is something that you want to achieve with NFV, your OSS systems request your orchestrator to provision that uh, service. That is a granularity which the network service orchestrator looks at. It has inputs in terms of the service catalogs as well as the network function catalogs which define what is it that it can provide to the users, either be the OSS or any other systems consuming its northbound. 
It also interacts with the virtual infrastructure manager, uh, VIM, where we typically position OpenStack. To get uh, an overview of what are the NFVI resources that it has at its dispense and what are the different instances that it is trying to run on this infrastructure. Now, the interfaces that, uh, that are marked up for standardization as part of the specifications are indicated in bold lines. Uh, and the dotted lines are some things that uh, indicate that they are not in the scope of standardization, at least in this first release. So we are talking about interfacing between the network service orchestrator and the VNF manager, as well as the VNF manager and the infrastructure manager, and also between the VNF manager and the virtual network functions themselves. If you look at this a bit closely, you will understand that a very critical role is played by the VNF manager component. It is interfacing between the network service orchestrator uh, and the lower layers where uh, the infrastructure provisioning is happening. It is also talking to your VNF. So we'll f uh, what we will focus on is how this can be achieved and how we have implemented this uh, solution in OpenStack using the Tacker API. But before going there, we have um, built solutions around achieving firewall as a service, starting with OpenStack Grizzly as the base. So we'll walk you through the very first solution that we have built. Yes. Uh, uh, when we built this solution, we really didn't have uh, the firewall API in OpenStack. So we wrote our own API. And uh, at that point of time, for people who are familiar with this release, the typical way to achieve solutions was to build agents and plugins uh, to achieve the orchestration. And uh, this solution typically follows that trend. So we had built this solution with a firewall agent that runs on every compute host. And because we wanted a standard API to interface with the VNF so that uh, the solution can be used across multiple solutions, the firewall agent also interfaces with the uh, virtual network function over the netconf interface. Now, we built this solution. It was running fine. And when we put this through our test framework, what we realized was it really doesn't uh, scale to the expectations. There are bottlenecks. And there are uh, resource consumptions going on. Um, I mean, the resource consumption is high when you look at uh, the firewall agent, when it is trying to monitor or when it is trying to communicate with uh, the OpenStack controller. So with these uh, limitations in mind, the next solution that we looked at yeah, this is uh, the next generation solution that we built. We had used uh, Open Contrail to help us with the VNF orchestration. Um, you can see that there is a VNF catalog and a VNF manager. These are achieved through the Open Contrail's config and uh, control components. We enhance the config component to be able to handle the firewall uh, API re firewall orchestration requests. And the controller, we have built a southbound plugin based on NetConf. <laughs> so that you are able to configure the firewall. This solution, uh, in terms of scalability, it scales pretty well. Of course, uh, we have tested it in an emulated environment. Uh, for the number of VNFs that it can handle, or uh, uh, what happens when you try to bring down any VNF, how quickly does the system respond? So the results were quite good. Uh, and there were no, not many issues in this. But after this is when the uh, ETSI specification came into picture. Uh, one, one thing that we need to know about this solution and the previous one is, it is the administrator who's trying to provision the firewall as well as the policies. So every time you, you are looking for uh, deploying a firewall, the administrator will have to do that for you. Moving to the next solution that we built on the latest Juno release. Yes. This is something that uh, is based on the Tacker API in OpenStack. What we have done here is we have built a separate component. You have the SVC VM API, in, uh, which is not part of the main uh, stream release in OpenStack. 
but we have used the SVC VM API in order to be able to orchestrate the firewall. Now, this orchestration is divided into two parts. The first thing, where you create the firewall itself as a device, as it is typically done in, your, uh, in, your, in the environments where you have a physical device, the administrator creates the device for you, and uh, he also maps your interfaces. And the tenant has the flexibility to uh, configure policies and rules on this firewall. And we have ensured that whatever configuration we are trying to provision here, we are able to do it through heat templates. So, um, and uh, I also have a demonstration for this, which I might not be able to run right now, but we are available in the design summit for the next two days. So we can surely run it through for anyone who's interested in that and wants to have a deeper understanding of this solution. So here we just have one VNF manager, no agents, and we create a management interface on the firewall through which we are trying to push the policies or uh, the configuration onto the firewall. And uh, the ideal scenario is when you have a firewall created with just the management interface, and when you want to provision more um, logical instances on that, when the tenant requests you um, to provide them with a firewall, you dynamically add the interfaces. This hot plug functionality is available in the Linux latest Linux kernels, but we don't have a test VNF on which we can actually try this out, things that are dynamic to this extent. So there are some workarounds which we have come up, come up with, uh, mapping some um, um, dummy interfaces and then trying to change that interface to the real networks. Uh, I know there are workarounds, but and this is and that is what keeps this as a proof of concept solution currently. But to be able to address that, we need uh, enhancements on the virtual network function side, on the VNF side, where you have uh, VNF which are capable of this hot plug feature. This is, a, um, this is what we have taken from the specification. I'm not sure you might not be able to read the uh, text. Apologies. But what we are trying to show here is the typical flow that happens when you're trying to provision a VNF. You have your VNF manager, which is a plugin component that we have built. And uh, you have the network function itself. And you have your uh, existing OpenStack implementation, which is your infrastructure manager. So when a request comes for instantiating a VNF, you make the required uh, validations. Uh, the virtual network function manager or the VNF manager is pre-configured with the templates for all the virtual network functions that it, it is supposed to handle. Now, there is a catch here because not all VNFs can be managed with a single VNF manager. So what we have tried to do here is uh, separate this functionality into two buckets where um, you have the generic functionality that is uh, common for most of the virtual network functions, as well as something that is specific for uh, one, one another, another set of uh, virtual network functions, the, uh, the way you configure and, and directly talk to the uh, VNF. And uh, then the typical flow goes on. When you try to create a device is when you talk to the infrastructure manager to create a VNF. Uh, the VNF manager translates uh, whatever information it has into a NOAA boot call, including um, adding a management uh, interface, one interface in the management network to the virtual network function, and the rest the dummy interfaces for reasons which we have discussed. And after that, when we are trying to provide uh, the service to a tenant, we try to only map the network interfaces onto the device that has already been created. So you don't go and spawn a virtual machine every time a tenant requests you for a creation of a firewall. This is a key difference between the solutions that we have done before, where every request you go create a firewall with whatever networks have been asked for. Yeah, while we were talking about what we have done, uh, there, are, um, there are some gaps in uh, uh, making this a full-fledged solution in the areas of scheduling, high availability, 
policy driven orchestration and scaling these challenges are di distributed uh, across the different components of the solution and these are what we are trying to address as uh, in the subsequent uh, i mean a subsequent work on what we have done already and as i mentioned if uh, you are interested in taking a look at the demo you can reach out to me or partha will be available in the uh, design summit for the next two days Yeah, with that, we come to the end of whatever we wanted to present. As I mentioned, we have the demo laptop in which the complete uh, POC is running live. So sometime tomorrow, day after tomorrow, anytime when you are interested, you can contact us and we can run the demo in the Kilo Summit. We are open to questions now. If no questions, thank you for your time. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.